Okay. So, welcome to Drupal Camp, somewhat of the first session. Um, all right, so I, I'll, this is keeping up with the latest trends in design, either with Drupal or just kind of in general. Um, I'm Brett Anderson, graphic designer at KWall slash developer. Not so much developer. Um, but I enjoy Drupal. I love it. Um, used other CMSs. Didn't like them as much. Once I got hired, I didn't know much about Drupal. Um, and after the past almost two years, I uh, have definitely learned a lot and build everything with Drupal. Um, I'm a current student, last semester senior at Laguna Art College. Going to be glad to be done. Um, I love print, design, pretty much everything, uh, interactive, motion graphics, you name it. Um, and so I work for KWAL, we're creative development, uh, we do lots of things with educational um, institutions, um, social media, our social networks, um, and so on. Um, and if you want, you can check out my website, brennandersonart.com. Uh, for some of the stuff. So, let's get into it. So, I start off the presentation first off by saying a lot of what happens with the design all depends. Because I feel like, at least my thought process on it, is with coding or with programming, there's kind of set guidelines and there's an order and a rule to things uh, to a certain degree. Obviously, there are... Um, different situations can come up. Um, you know, it's, but for the most part, one plus two plus three is always going to equal six, you know. While with design, it's, well, maybe one doesn't like to be a one anymore, or maybe one decides to go somewhere else, and you have lots of different variables that come in because of a client. Um, and you could say you have your own style as an artist, um, but you really have to adapt to what's going on, what your client wants, what you want to do, what you want to look like. Um, and the web, obviously, every day is changing. New things are coming out, so you constantly have to be in the loop. Um, but for the most part, there are still some key principles to always think about when designing or even as a developer to think about. Is that con content is the most important. If anything, the, mo the whole purpose of the web is getting information. Yes, we want it to look pretty, but really, at the beginning of the internet, it all was just as plain HTML and tables as can be. Um, and people still figured things out because it's the text that really is important. Uh, and then we, as designers, or with design, use color, use images, all of that to enhance the user's experience and to maybe even convey the message clearer instantly without having to read anything, um, as well as the placement of the content is important. Um, so effectiveness, there's a couple different uh, ways we can look at this um, with the different emotional, the rationale, the branding, are you keeping with you know, your company, or your clients come to you, are you making them look good? Are you keeping with what they want? Um, I mean, many times you'll get a brand new client, a startup company, uh, you know, and you'll have to do their brand standards and their colors and what their logo even looks like, things like that. Um, and their, you know, website has to, to show that. Um, so, simple is better. We've all heard the whole kiss, keep it simple, stupid. Um, and though I say there's always some exceptions, because I, I like minimalism, I like simple things like that, but there's, I like details as well, you know? There's nothing wrong with that. Um, so first off, kind of starting with some of the basics of design is a good grid, um, starting with either, you know, 960 width or uh, 980, whatever, kind of, you know, those are the standards for widths. Um, I personally, uh, at least when, or one of the newer techniques is to do a mobile-first design, which I've never really been a big big fan on. 
Um, Because I feel like the main website, if you're looking on a computer, is kind of lost. Um, A lot of the details and everything's very blocked and just kind of stacked on top of each other instead of like well laid out. And I mean, I guess you just have to spend more time in that sense. Um, But starting with a good grid, obviously important. Keep things structured. Uh, Wireframe it out. Uh, I just spent, I don't know how long with one of our clients and we just, it was this, uh, it's for their company, their dashboard kind of back end task management system. And I've gone through other clients where we do wireframe and you know, it looks something like this and they're like, oh yeah, no, that looks great. And then once we get into design, they're like, oh, well, let's move this whole bottom section up to the top and let's move the middle section. Let's make that instead of three blocks, let's make it like 10. And all of a sudden I'm like, but we wireframe this out. Like you, you, this was, this was supposed to be already done, like finalized. Like the design was just supposed to show you what it's like, how pretty it's going to look. Um, and so as much as there's a pain with this client I'm talking about, uh, this new one for the task management system, uh, we wireframed like every single page and just we were, he was sold on it. And then once now I'm in design, he's like, oh, I yeah, know that looks good. I like the look of the buttons. There's no like changing of positions of things, drastic changes. I was like, oh my gosh. Um, so in that sense, wireframing, just keep it really simple. Uh, blocks, X's for where images may be, uh, lorem ipsum for text. Like we're not looking for specifics here, but placement, functionality, how the user is going to click through it, things like that, um, just help to take out a lot of the headache of when you're actually designing. They're like, oh, we'll move this over here. And you're like, well, in Photoshop or Fireworks, that isn't exactly the easiest thing. Um, So some of that, like this, the application is balsamic. Um, I think it's $50, something like that. I'm not sure. Um, But there are some free ones out there that are good. Um, and of course, pencil and paper is not as expensive as well. Um, and it's, I guess you could say, the old school way. Uh, so design, getting creative. Uh, some of the big trends that have come and maybe even are going by, uh, skeuomorphism. I think we've all seen, probably Apple has been one of the biggest uh, adopters of that and now are going away from it. Um, But really it's all about the details, it's about shadows, um, it's about gradients, making things look extremely real but small or maybe have a a, a interesting interesting perspective. Um, I personally, I I love this kind of style. I think it looks good, I think it adds a lot of character, I think it's a lot more descriptive, Um, but I also um, like to look at it. And so one of them, this is a website I did for my mom. Uh, she runs a, uh, a uh, baby shoe like pattern company. So this is kind of it. This was even before I really uh, knew a lot about textures and things like that. But it's just that kind of sense of it's a closet. It's Kirby's closet. And so and there's these shoes inside of the different shelves um, and things like that the bottom you know, just adding uh, perspective and things, lace and whatnot. Um, so that's kind of an example of that. Um, next we have flat design on as we, you may or may not know, the iOS 7 is extremely minimalistic. Um, and they're taking out most of the gradients, or there's like a single gradient on any icon. Um, things are just very flat and simple and thin strokes and all of that. Windows kind of started it with their whole Metro uh, look of a solid block of color and things like that. Um, and a lot of companies have started using that because it's just simple, straightforward. You get some nice bright colors. Uh, there's not a lot of detail or uh, really kind of, I'm saying there's there's no work to it, but um, I'm not always the biggest fan of this kind of style. Um, I don't know how I'm going to feel with my iPhone looking like this, but we'll see what happens. Um, So here's Twitter did their kind of 
only on Twitter uh, recap of 2012. Um, and there's this just really simple just image. You have a block of color for the type underneath, uh, no real shadows or gradients that you see commonly on sites. Um, just super simple. Um, yeah. So personally, I like kind of a middle ground of the two. I like a lot, you know, I like detail, but I also like it to be simple. And it's kind of a play, playing my game of where uh, to go. And so this is a project for my senior thesis uh, at school. We, at the end, you, um, at least for a lot of our school, mainly is a fine arts uh, school. And we have animation, we have uh, graphic design. Um, and so they kind of, you know, when you're a fine artist, you have your style and your, your theme. With graphic design, you don't really, I guess you can have style, but it's not the same. Really, you're catering to what the client wants. You're constantly changing. And, well, if they don't like your style, you have to adapt to that and do something else. Um, and so for us, we come up with these big kind of projects for ourselves and kind of design around those. And so for me, I... Um, I lived in Africa for two years, and so soccer is a huge thing there as well. It's pretty much everywhere else but the United States. Um, and so it's kind of a universal language. And so I wanted to create this nonprofit organization that would kind of be a Tom's shoe idea, but with soccer. Um, and so this is just kind of an example of mixing uh, textures. I don't know if you can really see it very well in the projector, but. Um, this kind of sidebar top of the charts has kind of a leather texture to it. It's got like the stitching around the edges, you know, to kind of that feel of a uh, soccer shoe, things like that, different background textures, uh, gradients, but as well the buttons are simple, um, simple gradients. So it's kind of a mix of the two, um, and that's kind of my personal style. Um, then we get into user interface design, which I've recently fallen in love with. I think it's really fun. It's a lot more, um, I feel like, mentally engaging because you're really thinking, how is this user going around the site? How are they interacting? And at first when I thought of uh, user interface design, I'm thinking of like the back end of Drupal. I'm like, it's just a bunch of text fields and upload buttons like who cares about that that's boring and then it's like oh well what's the display of all that information um, and so you know we have to make it unique fun um, but still yeah, very usable uh, I didn't design this um, but I think it's a really great design has some great color um, and just a good usability throughout uh, I think this is a, supposed to be an iPad app uh, inspiration, um, obviously I don't just always come up with things by myself and obviously we can learn from others who have done it before which is who have done it successfully. Um, I kind of created my own website that has a collection of thing of images that I found as inspiring and cataloged them somewhat and uh, it's a little bit out of date but um, places like behance.net that's a great place to look for inspiration on different, what are the latest trends, what are the big professionals doing. Uh, Pinterest, actually, I think after uh, Housewives, designers are the next top uh, people that are on Pinterest. Because um, there's just, there's tons of images. Smashing Magazine is really good. They have lots of good articles, not only on web design, but also just in general on coding. Um, what are, like, uh, the latest trends even in that. Um, so then one of the things after we create you know, your website, you've gone through wireframing, you've kind of done a design. Um, just like with your CSS, you have a style sheet. Um, even with design, you should have a style guide. Um, and so that's what defines all the colors, all the buttons, all the tables. Uh, what a list, and in specific, at least for like Drupal, 
Um, we have list views. What does the what can a generic view look like? Uh, what's the you know H2 block title going to look like? Um, and so as a designer, I always have to go. I kind of have this generic sheet of um, that I just kind of copy and paste from project to project and just change out, okay, here's the colors, the text is going to look like this, the navigation is going to look like this, and I give all the rundown of what picture, or what uh, hex codes or what, uh, what the forms are, um, all that kind of detail so that even for our developers, they don't have to go in and look at what's the color or what's, um, you know, try to figure out themselves, but I've already laid out this style guide of X, Y, and Z, um, and it just kind of helps even development-wise go faster, and um, we even show this to the client, just be like, here's your style guide, like, just so you know, this is how it's going to look, and these are the guidelines. Uh, here's just another example. Even pagers, very important. Channel Do you use style tiles, or do you create your own style guides? Um, I don't necessarily know what style Guile. Guile. It's just basically what you just showed the previous slide is a way of uh, creating a style guide, but it's, um, it just templates basically like Photoshop or Illustrator that uh, provides a type of style guides. No, yeah, I just usually do it manually by hand, just going. Uh, have already decided, and somewhat you've already decided most of this information as you've designed, you know, the home page and maybe like an interior page. You kind of already understand where what most of these are, um, and sometimes even your design won't even have a table style, but you need to be sure you have prepared for that, even if it's really simple. Because what if your client decides, oh, on this page, I'm going to slap a table on there, and you haven't done anything with it? It's going to look horrible. Um, even pagers, if you have a whole list view, haven't thought about the pager, it's going to look bad. Or it's going to look like the generic Drupal uh, pager. So, functionality. Uh, so here's some of the, you'd say more of the trends or the um, so yeah, functionality of it. Um, minimalism, things really big images, uh, simple navigation, not a lot of real content to begin with. Um, like this is, I think, a photography uh, website or portfolio. Um, and so just super simple, not a lot to read, or just a little bit to look at. Um, lots of white space. Uh, that's maybe more of a personal choice. I just like things to be a little bit less cluttered and uh, not as compact. Get some, some breathing room in between the content. Uh, full backgrounds are very big, huge. Um, now, obviously, a lot of these depend on what your client needs. These aren't always good for every client or for every design to have a large background or a large image background. Um, but as we're becoming more visual, I feel like people in general are becoming much more visual as we see with like Pinterest. Obviously, Pinterest is nothing but images. Um, and so people like that. They like just to be able to scroll and see images and like things and you're good. So even here, they like to see a big image, tell the story and don't move on. Um, parallax scrolling. Um, I've never been able to, to design for it, but I think it's at times very cool. Um, HTML5 to the extreme, uh, as well as sometimes very slow. That's the only problem I have with it sometimes is that browsers aren't maybe fast enough or things are just too intense. Like sometimes, so this example I'm going to show is from Nike. And obviously Nike's going to do some pretty crazy stuff. Um, but I really like this for, um, I think it's their Air Jordans. So you just start scrolling. And it's just different layers that are animating and backgrounds. And I'm not sure how they do all this, but <laughs> it's cool. That's all I can say. Right, and I haven't found, you know, we haven't had a client that's like, this is exactly what we want. I'm like, 
I have no idea where I would even start with this. <laughs> and just this whole story of this inner shoe thing going around. I mean, and there you go, you're at the end. So, I mean, I, that's just, whenever I think of like, okay, what's the like innovative things, I always try to look for, um, you know, the big companies. And so I was like, well, Nike's usually got something pretty crazy up their sleeve. And obviously, they have the funding to just do whatever the heck they want and make it as cool as they want. And uh, I feel that they did just that with all their 3D animation. So that's parallax uh, scrolling, and that's like, I feel like that's an extreme example of parallax scrolling. I feel like most websites are just a, going down the page, it just maybe different panels in the background change out, maybe a couple things change. Um, but that's just one of the options uh, that we have. Uh, responsive design, I feel like, is mandatory at this point. Uh, I feel like there's not really, you shouldn't not prepare for mobile because that's just where everybody is. Um, and I think for KWAL, we pretty much make it, that's just, you're getting a mobile site as well. And um, I mean, obviously the client has the option of not choosing that. Um, but it's something, of course, that you want to have decided when you're first starting to design. Um, is to make sure that you are designing for responsive as well. Um, if you are just doing, you know, uh, a website is to make sure you're like, okay, I know this block when it goes responsive is going to fall either on top or below. Um, but if you have lots of crazy things going on, um, that might not work out as well. Um, different, you know, we always just do the three breaks, your mobile, tablet, um, and then desktop. Um, and yeah, a lot of things you have to hide because slideshows, even if you're using like a flex, flex slider, it shrinks so small for mobile that it's not even really useful to have it on there. So a lot of times you're hiding things. Um, we actually made uh, the KWAL website um, responsive. Uh, and one of them, I designed this whole like spinning chart thing that I was like, oh, this would be so cool if it's interactive. And then Patrick, our uh, head developer, he's like, well, if you want it, you have to develop it. I'm like, well, I'm just going to make three images that resize. Because um, I can't do that. I'm like, well, if you give me the next year to learn jQuery, then OK. Uh, no. Uh, Retina display. There is a Retina module. That makes that basically just makes your images two times bigger. Um, it makes it so that they look nice and clear on like an iPad or any kind of Retina display. Um, I I tried it out on my uh, image uh, collection website. It actually works pretty well. Um, I was somewhat surprised. Um, so that's an option for Retina. Uh, there, I know there's ways of just making another image that you swap out when you know, the browser detects that it's, or the website detects that it's in that kind of a, a device, uh, things like that. But this is a good, easy, simple option. I believe I just installed it, and I think it was pretty much good. <laughs> I think it may be image style. Um, so things to, keep, to think about, obviously, are to keep your eyes open, um, get a big blog feed um, of different websites. I have... Uh, a whole list of them uh, that I use or go to that maybe I don't necessarily uh, like the design, but it's good inspiration. I see them like, oh, I like those colors or um, things like that. And so you always have to be up to date. That's why like, I recommended like Smashing Magazine. They're always kind of showing you what's new, what, what are people using. Um, they usually have like a flashback. They're like top things of 2012 or things to look forward to in 2013, stuff like that, um, that are always uh, really useful. Uh, you may not be able to apply them immediately because maybe there's not a Drupal or a yeah, Drupal module for it or things like that. Because that's what I have to wait for because I can't program. So I just wait for a module to come out and then I can use it. Um, and then I make it look pretty. So uh, thank you. Um, and if you launch, 
on the KWAL site, uh, kwalcompany.com, I have uh, my thought of designing kind of for Drupal or kind of the latest trends, which is uh, basically this uh, this presentation. Uh, yeah, so thank you. Any questions? Comments? Just a comment about you know, getting inspiration and trying to not go crazy by looking at everything out there. You, know, you still know, you know what it is that's happening. Uh, there's a series of uh, feeds that you can subscribe to that make it really easy to uh, just be able to absorb just the enough information that you don't go crazy with the whole the information. Uh, there's things like CSS Weekly or Responsive Web Design Weekly web design weekly. Uh, if you look up those uh, topics, there's uh, those feeds that you can subscribe to, and once a week you get a, a nice feed of the latest uh, information, you know, what's, what's happening, what are the trends, and, and what's hot right now, so you don't get overloaded with a lot of information. So those are kind of nice ways of, uh, to, to be able to not get overloaded with information. There's also something similar, the, the weekly, uh, the weekly drop, I think, same principle, but for Drupal, it's all the latest uh, information and copies about what's happening in the Drupal world. Yeah, I think, don't they have a magazine as well? Uh, probably. But yeah, I think so. You get those, you know, just once a week, yeah. uh, and Thursday or something, you get a nice summary of uh, topics or articles about uh, that specific topic. Wait, what about Drupal? I think it's the weekly drop. Weekly, weekly drop. <laughs> yeah, weekly drop. Yes, I mean, there's tons of inspiration. I know a lot of times um, with projects, at least that's why I, I like Pinterest a lot. So sometimes I'm like, okay, I need an example or like a good solution for, um, you know, a, a tab. I'm like, I'm, I just can't think of how to, you know, make these tabs stand out a little bit more. And I'll just search on Pinterest or even the internet, just, you know, tab websites and just get a few inspiration. I'm like, oh, that's a good one. That's a good solution for you know, that kind of works for me and I can adapt and change it how I need to to fit, uh, you know, the design. And so um, you have to pull inspiration from everybody. That's what everyone else is doing. We're all kind of stealing from each other. This is kind of how the web is and how design is and art in general. When you, when you do your designs, do you start with an off-the-shelf theme or do you, do you just build custom? Uh, we build custom themes. Uh, we start with Zen and just go at it. How about wireframing? Do you do any in browser wireframing or do you simply just go to uh, Illustrator or Logani for um, For wireframing, I always just use uh, Balsamic and uh, like Photoshop Fireworks to design. When you're wireframing, um, what helps you determine what's a good layout? Because I mean, there's lots of references you know, that, that you listed for things like keeping up on like design concepts, color, type, this and that. But layout seems to be pretty critical to me. Right. Um, Processing. Uh, when it comes to layout, um, that's really sometimes. I'm fortunate enough to be in like the kickoff meeting with the client and I can kind of hear their feedback or what's kind of important to them. Um, and those are just questions we, as a designer, as a company, they should, we should ask is what's like, what are you trying to push? Or maybe even um, if it's, you know, we're redesigning a website, you can kind of go through and see and even ask them what, what are people, if it's like an e-commerce site, what are people buying the most? What's your, your top sellers? And you can kind of figure out what's important to, it's more of what's important to um, the user coming onto the site. What do you want to push them to do? Um, and that's really where you have to say like, okay, what is, what's the purpose of, you know, this company, like for my um, uh, nonprofit organization, Move Forward, you know, I have to define what is the outcome I want for moveforward.org. And I want it to be for people all around the world to connect and have that unified, uh, you know, language of soccer. So that's kind of my thing. So that's what drives, okay, well, 
that's what I want. How do I get people to sign up? How do I get them to talk to each other? Oh, you know, show their profiles, um, show what's going on, you know, latest feeds, or um, if it's just like a corporate site, well, you need to tell like who they are. Like, I think most people, when they come to a site, they're like, well, I see the logo. It says they're an interactive solution. Okay, that's a very broad statement. Uh, what, you know, let me look at this next, you know, tagline that says something about designing for web and print or you know um so it's that's where there's no like set rules and it's it's difficult in that sense and you just have to be creative um and i i always try to kind of push the boundary just kind of like okay well i've done it like this before what if i put it over here and you know um yeah, that that's that's. I think the question every designer has when it comes to the web is, where am I going to put all this stuff? <laughs> yeah. Any other questions, concerns? <laughs> all right. Um, and so also check out some of the other K Wall sessions we have. Uh, um, <clears throat> top modules to leverage by Sebastian, Workbench by Alex, um, and kind of lead generation and things like that with uh, our uh, Vice President uh, Matt. So uh, enjoy Drupal Camp and uh, learn a lot. <laughs>